I would like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation to present our results on spider silk in detail. Well, spider silk is an especially interesting material and the intention of my talk is to present to you the physical foundation of the extraordinary uh, mechanical properties of spider silk. Spider silk, spider silk um, has in so far extraordinary mechanical properties. If you measure the stress strain dependence and compare this, for instance, with nylon or with glasses or high density polyethylene, aramide, and so on, then you see here a spider silk and yeah, it has um, the unique properties in so far as one has a high elasticity on the one hand side and on the other hand side, one has an intense energy absorption. And this is the reason why spider silk is especially of interest due to its extraordinary high mechanical impact strengths and the impact strengths yeah, is simply the area under this chart of the stress against strain yeah, and the impact strengths of the drag line spider silk yeah, is indicated in here and uh, in milli mega joule per cubic meter and if you compare with uh, silkworm silk or with high tensile steel or with Kevlar, then you see spider silk has really extraordinary mechanical properties. And while well, this means that, of course, spider silk is for many applications of highest interest, yeah, um, while well, you can use it for parachutes, you can use it for bulletproof vests, you can use it um, in order to protect your head, but there are also um, many uh, surgical and medical applications due to the fact that um, spider silk is a biocompatible polymer. Yeah, um, well, how realizes nature um, um, the fabrication of spider silk. Yeah, this is a fantastic um, compact the, um, the, um, the machinery which is known in detail. And yeah, within a few millimeters in the duct of um, the spinning process, yeah, um, spider silk, um, the, the spider protein turns from a liquid in an aqueous solution into a water-insoluble um, um, fiber. If you look, uh, if you ask what is the chemical composition of spider silk, then the chemical composition is known in great detail, and there are essentially two high molecular weight proteins, uh, SP1 and um, MASP2. And the spider silk, yeah, is um, in words, in the, in the terminology of polymer chemistry, a blocopolymer. We have here blocks where we have glycerin, a crystalline region, um, which are mainly contain um, alanine and here we have amorphous regions which mainly contain glycine and um, proline and uh, this is a repetitive pattern and here we have terminal positions. Yeah, If you analyze the structure of spider silk then it's a composite material which is contained out of nanocrystals, the dimensions are indicated in here, which are embedded in a amorphous matrix. And um, the nanocrystals are highly ordered. I will speak about this in a moment in more detail. And it is also for the further important to realize that spider silk yeah, um, has a complicated 
um, um, yeah, mesoscopic structure. It has the nanocrystals on the one hand side, but the fiber itself is protected with the skin of a special pro gluco protein, and the skin is indicated in here, and this will play in the further an important role. So far, the chemical structure, and I would like now uh, to draw a first conclusion. Spider silk is, in the words of polymer chemistry, composed of nanocrystals, which are embedded in an amorphous matrix, and um, the fiber itself is uh, covered with an outer skin. And I would like to ask the question, well, how are these nanocrystals interconnected? This is, and especially I would like to answer and to address the question, um, yeah, what is the physical origin of the extraordinary mechanical properties of spider silk? Yeah, um, the experiments I will present are based on infrared spectroscopy, and here we take advantage of the fact that one can silk um, spiders, yeah, and you, you you do a forced silking, yeah, you fix uh, gently the spider, and then you see here the, um, the drag line spider silk, and now you can construct an apparatus which winds up the spider silk, and the result is shown in here, yeah, and here you get a, a perfect parallel arrangement of this spider silk, um, um, yeah, which is wound up between two stainless steel um, rods. And um, if you would look at it, it would look like a perfect wire grid as you have it, for instance, in far infrared spectroscopy. Yeah, and here is again a picture of uh, the a micro picture micrograph of the spider silk, and now we carry out the following experiment: we carry out infrared transmission spectroscopy, and we do this in a polarized um, way. Of course, yeah, we have here a polarizer for infrared spectroscopy, and additionally, we stretch the fiber laterally. And we ask, well, what happens to the um, spectra? And uh, the spectrum is shown in here. Here we have uh, typical bands, amide 1, and so on, and so on. And there's especially one band which is of special interest. This is uh, a band which is um, uh, spe specific for the absorption of polyalanine species. And um, this band is blown up here, enlarged here, and this is polyalanine, and this is alanine glycine, and this is polyglycine, and so on. And now we can, um, yeah, and what is the molecular interpretation of this band at 964 wave numbers? It is, this is well known, a coupled vibration of the CH3 rocking vibration and the NC alpha stretching vibration. And um, yeah, due to the fact that the alanine groups are um, primarily uh, located within the nanocrystals, we have now a means to measure the orientation of the alanine groups within the nanocrystals. Yeah, and here we carry out now already an experiment where we apply a macroscopic stress to the samples, to the spiders, yeah, as I have shown uh, to you in the previous slides, and we ask what happens to the spectra, and we especially ask what happens to the range of this poly poly L alanine band, um, which is located at 964 wave numbers. And this is shown in here. Yeah, we see 
And this was for us a big surprise. We observe under the conditions if we apply an if we apply an eighty percent strain, then we observe that this band shows up a shift, but it is not um, um, really broadened. And we have here additionally also uh, the other bands of alanine, glycine, and so on which are not so important for the further discussion. And we can, um, this shift is a red shift, yeah? So under the influence of an external strain, we observe here a micros microscopic red shift. And the question is how to interpret this. And here we have now the absorption frequency and dependence on the strain. And we observe there is a thresholdless dependence on the stress. And um, this thresholdless dependence um, does not change in slope if one increases this stress. Yeah, this means that by using infrared spectroscopy, we have now a molecular sensor of force which is located within the nanocrystals, and this um, will be of importance, of course, for the further discussion. And now we can um, draw detailed conclusions. We know that uh, spider silk is made out of nanocrystals, which are embedded um, in an amorphous matrix of the protein material, and we make the observation that if we apply now an external mechanical stress that then we observe within the nanocrystals a pronounced redshift. And this means, yeah, due to the fact that our sensor is located within the nanocrystals, that the interconnection between these nanocrystals must be pre-strained. And this enables us now to develop a model, yeah? We simply assume, we, we, we can estimate the density of the interconnections between the nanocrystals. And we can also estimate, um, well, the number of chains which must be pre-strained. And we can assume for the force, force strain depend, stress strain dependence of the single polymer chains, the warm like chain model. And if we do this, then we can directly uh, develop a model. And this is shown in here. Yeah, here we have the nanocrystals embedded in an amorphous matrix. And here we have now, yeah, uh, the macroscopic strain. And here we have now the uh, function for the pre-strain distribution. This is the force uh, strain dependence of the worm-like chain model. And um, yeah, this is a small weak contribution due to the fact that the spider silk is surrounded by skin. And uh, this is now um, um, a model where we know all the different uh, quantities within these integrals. And we can now uh, yeah, deduce if we have uh, what is if we have the probability of um, versus microscopic strain, then we observe the following that we have for the native sample, we have um, this dependence. And here on this side, we have the macroscopic strain. And if we make now yeah, a certain assumption concerning this distribution, then we can, using this integral, we can directly deduce the macroscopic strain stress against the macroscopic strain and this dependence yeah um, um, is uh, yeah given by this model and it's dominated simply by um, two quantities yeah describing this distribution and this is the mean position 
of um, this maximum and it is the width of this maximum. And um, yeah, with this, it's a Gaussian distribution. And we observe here full accord of this. Um, yeah, here the points are the measurement and uh, the result of this model is indicated in here. And um, now we can, yeah, we have of course to ask if there is a continuous um, internal negative pressure which wants to um, which wants to um, yeah uh, attract the nanocrystals, then this internal pressure must be counterbalanced by some force. And this is indeed the case. And this counterbalance is realized by the external skin and the amorphous matrix in which the nanocrystals are embedded. And, um, and so far, I can now come to the answers of my questions. Well, the first conclusion is already clear in terms of polymer, Physics and chemistry, spider silk is a composite material where you have nanocrystalline units which are embedded in an amorphous matrix and the whole fiber is surrounded by an external uh, skin covering the surface of the fiber. If you ask how are the nanocrystals interconnected, the nanocrystals are interconnected by, um, by amorphous regions, but the speciality of nature is that a certain fraction of the chains in this amorphous region is pre-strained. And this means that one has an internal negative pressure. And this internal negative pressure is counterbalanced by the matrix in the surrounded skin. And in the words of physics, this means that spider silk is a material which is under normal conditions, yeah, in a non-equilibrium state. And uh, this means concerning the mechanical properties that spider silk, um, yeah, uh, can, if you apply external um, mechanical energy, then this external mechanical energy is immediately dissipated um, into molecular channels and the mechanism of um, this, uh, the, the dissipation is at the end the breaking of age bonds. It was not possible within this short talk to work out this and to present this to you in detail, but we made many, many more studies. At the end, I would like to thank the people who did the work. This is especially Pericles Papadopoulos, who made his habilitation in my group, and here two PhD students, Wilhelm Kosak and Markus Anton, and um, also Roxana Figuli, um, and the money came from the German Science Foundation, and I would like to thank you for your attention.